Good morning, Muskegon. This is I am Muskegon, and I'm Jim Riley here in Muskegon's Clear Channel Studios with my friend and engineer, that legendary, the man who put the O in radio, Oscar Osbo. And uh, helping us out this morning in our quest for truth, justice, and the American way, as I look over at uh, my buddy Sean, <laughs> Sean Mullally. Um, and Sean, of course, uh, has been on the show numerous times before, but uh, you're, of course, an MCC yes. uh, trustee. And uh, you are a budding uh, media superstar with your own uh, TV show on, on MCC TV, right? Well, I don't know about superstar, maybe uh, maybe down the road, but right. uh, we do have a monthly show on uh, MCC TV carried on Comcast and Charter Cable called Muskegon in Motion, okay. where we're highlighting some of the new and interesting things happening around Muskegon County. And so when's it on? When's it on? That's on uh, Sundays. Tuesdays and Thursdays at uh, 5.30 or 8.30 p.m. All right. Well, check them out. Of course, we had to lock the doors of all the women trying to get in. So yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one, of the, one of the cool things that he's finding out is, is about all of the all the gals that, uh, <laughs> yes. that track you down. For some reason, Oscar, they, they haven't been chasing us. I know. The groupies, <laughs> the groupies have missed uh, the well, Iron Muskegon they, crew. They well, we had our chance many years ago. So there you yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> we had our chance. Well, pretty much it's over. Hey, and sitting with us, uh, actually today uh, we're going to have a little uh, different show because we've got the election coming up in a, in a few weeks. And uh, we have sitting with us uh, Muskegon County Treasurer, multi-term elected treasurer and past county commissioner and uh, entrepreneur businessman, Tony Malaziotis. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. Um, and thank you for pronouncing the name very correctly. I, well, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I actually worked on that. I, I think it's important, uh, not just for the show, but I, it's nice to try to figure out how people's names are pronounced. And, and I'm, I'm trying, doing my best. I'll probably mangle it a few times. Maybe we'll just stick with Tony for today. But we're going to have three, uh, three of the folks who are going to be running in this very, very important election um, who are running. Uh, Tony is running uh, to be reelected as Muskegon County Treasurer. We're going to spend about a half hour with him. And then coming up, we're going to have a uh, very familiar face to this show, and certainly to the folks in Muskegon County, Cindy Fairfield, who is running as a Republican, looking to um, to uh, replace, uh, looking to get elected as the new Muskegon County Clerk. And uh, then we will finish up with uh, Eric Rodoff, who is the uh, running as a Republican, running against Tony. Uh, Malatziotis uh, to be uh, the new uh, Muskegon County Treasurer, and Eric is also the uh, Muskegon Tea Party Chairman. So that's that's what's on deck here, and we are going to start right off. We're going to just bop you right on the head, Tony. You're here. You came uh, uh, to the show to explain uh, why why should we reelect you? I mean, uh, okay, experience, but um, you know, what 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 have you done for us lately? Well, uh, first of all, I'm a pretty nice guy. You know, so I think I'm sort of <laughs> and I'll, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. <laughs> um, I've been a uh, county treasurer for eight years now. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of changes that took place. Uh, well, I'm very proud of my record and what have accomplished there. My biggest concern was more than anything when I took office back uh, eight years ago was that the state of Michigan was the main source of. Uh, uh, the foreclosed process, and uh, of course this was before the collapse of the economy in the, in the state of Michigan and so sure. forth. So um, with Public Act 123, uh, gave the opportunity to a lot of the county treasurers across the state to take over that process instead of the state of Michigan being the foreclosing process, uh, unit, then the county treasurer's office is the foreclosing government unit. And part of the reason that um, I decided to become an opt-in county and take over that process, Jim, was because uh, before when people were losing their, their houses, their properties on the tax foreclosures, uh, they had to talk to the state and try to pick up a phone and try to call the state and try to talk to somebody and tell them why they shouldn't take your house and why, um, you know, the hardships that you're having and so forth. Well, now they're just doing anything you need to do is come to my office. We have an open door policy. Uh, talk to us. Uh, we look at the individuals, you know, by case by case, and, and then we'll qualify them for different programs that we have. Um, now, let me let me ask you about this because this is news to me. Mm -hmm. um, this did not exist uh, when you took over as the county treasurer, uh, although it was a new program. So you initiated it, you built it up, and you made it go, right? Well, it it did go into effect in uh, with Public Act 123 in 1999 by Muskegon County. It wasn't an opt-in county until I took over. Okay. Uh, we right. had the opportunity. So this is an accomplishment that you brought. 
It is. I think it was, like I said, was a few different reasons. I'll explain one of them. The second one is uh, the properties that we do have to foreclose, that we cannot help the people, you know, retain them and so forth. The money uh, collected from those foreclosures used to go to the state of Michigan DNR. Uh, right now, that those funds are staying here in Muskegon County. Now explain that. When, when you foreclose, where, where, how does the county get money? Uh, on the tax foreclose process? Yeah. Okay. First of all, um, when you don't pay your property tax, if Jim Riley doesn't pay his property tax at his house, okay. then uh, the local unit on March 1st of the following year that you haven't paid it, they turn them over to the county, and that's a state law for collections. We borrow in approximately $12 million a year, the county does, in order to pay the taxes that people haven't paid for whatever the reason might be. Yes, mm -hmm. okay, the county approves those those uh, short-term bonds. Right, that's right. Now, you have to remember that when Public Act 1213 took over, it also changed the amount of years that a person can lose their property. It went from five years down to two years in one in one month. Okay. So once they get turned over to us on, on March 1st, then my office uh, makes them whole. We, we borrow this money, like I said, and we make the municipalities whole. Part of the reason is because they need the funds in order to operate. Um, and uh, once that happens, then it's the responsibility of the county treasurer's office to go out and try to collect this money to in place, pay the, pay the bonds off, and, um, and make our coffers even. Well, let's say the house goes all the way through the three years in one month and ultimately goes into foreclosure. How does the county make any money on this? Well, the, well first of all, like I said, on the sell process, the yep. county makes the money on what we sell stays here. It doesn't go to Detroit anymore. It doesn't go to Lansing. You sell the property. We sell the property, okay. right. All right. And we pay the bonds. We pay the bonds. Yep. We pay the money we borrow. And there's fees that go. And, you know, those are all regulated, of course, by state legislators. So all this... That accumulates some funds okay. that go into what we call the forfeiture fund in, within the county. And the forfeiture fund, then it's according to what the Board of Commissioners wish to do and, and try to disperse the money there to general fund or other uh, means that they might have within the county. Okay. Now, in the last few years, we've seen here as well as everywhere an unprecedented number of people losing their houses. Yeah. Whether it's, really it's, whether it's bank foreclosures or, or tax foreclosures. Uh, what do you see can be done or have you been doing to to achieve the goal of trying to help people stay in their homes and get current with their taxes as opposed to losing them? Sure. Um, the process is your first year of delinquency, you are delinquent. The second year, you are in a forfeiture, what we call forfeiture. Uh, our forfeitures, the last three years at least, they have started between 3,700 and 4,000 for, and over 4,000. Four features in the in the Muskegon County. In Muskegon County alone, in the old process, Whoa. the way it was, the the way the economy is, probably about 75, 80 percent of those properties would be lost on tax, on mm -hmm. on tax uh, reasons. So, what we do is we create a program like a hardship policy to answer your question, son. Yes. Where people come into our office and and we talk to them, we try to qualify them for a hardship. We will put them on a payment plan. Mm -hmm. So instead of uh, uh, taking the property away and, and putting them out on the street, uh, we, we give them a chance to pay on a monthly basis according to their income. Mm -hmm. And the second year, if they're still behind, and so and we're trying to get them off that situation in the future too. Yeah. Now this it's, is a program, I, I want to interrupt here though, because this is something, again, I'm not familiar with, uh, thankfully. I've not had, had need for this. But where we've got possibly as many as 4,000, perhaps even more how people losing their homes, in many cases, and of course, they're fighting that they were negotiating with the banks, of course, or whomever they're they're buying a house from. But they've also got a tax issue too. But if they have a problem, they can then come in and, and, and into the county uh, treasurer's office. Is this a program that you began? Uh, well, it's it's nothing new. It has happened in other counties. I adopted a program and we expanded it from there. Okay. Along with us trying to help the people, we also have partnered with a lot of different uh, nonprofit entities within the the community, churches, and so forth. If they're in a position that they cannot make any payments whatsoever, um, we get them in touch with those kind of people and we try to help them by uh, outside agencies coming in and helping uh, the homeowners stay into their, into their homes. The, the, the kinder, gentler side of the treasurer's office. I didn't know that. And, and, and I, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about what the treasurer's office does per se, although, frankly, I think it might be interesting down the road. But mm -hmm. questions. You've, you've got some things that you're very proud that you have, have accomplished over time. 
What have you got in mind for the future? Right, anything new? Are you saying, okay, if I get reelected, uh, the things are going on, the county's money is limited, state's money is limited, blah, blah, blah. Um, what, what, what ideas do you have going forward? Well, first of all, we don't know where the economy is going to take us at this point. Things are getting a little better and so forth. We're always looking for new ways of trying to, because the county treasurer's office is not just tax foreclosures. We are the keepers and the investors of county money, for example. Uh, we partner with different banks. We have RFPs. We're going out for services and cutting costs. To give you an example, there wasn't an RFP done in Muskegon County for probably 15, 18 years prior to me taking over. And right away I initiated that and we had the first RFP. Uh, we did stay with PNC Bank, which uh, um, they were there before, but what we did by doing the RFP and giving other um, institutions to come in and, and make bets you know, on the services that we use, we were able to really cut down the interest that we were paying. Actually, we, we have a zero cost on interest on on uh, services that we do. We were able to get uh, free checking for every employee in Muskegon County and so forth. So by doing the RFP, which I believe should be done at least between eight, every eight to ten years, you, there's a lot of things that you can gain. Okay, an RFP, by the way, is a request for proposal? Correct. Correct. Okay, in other words, uh, you're, you're putting it out to bid just in the way that the rest of us do when we look at our banks. If, if we don't like the fees, we do some shopping. But it is, uh, I'm glad to see that the county is doing that. Uh, but I still want to get to what's going on in the future. We're going to have to take a break here, and we will be right back with Muskegon County Treasurer Tony Malaciotis. Classic computer sales and service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Suite B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Call Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. And we are back at Muskegon's Eye on Muskegon, and we are talking with uh, Muskegon County Treasurer Tony Malaciotis and uh, my sidekick Oscar Osbo. I'm Jim Riley, and we've got Sean Mullally, uh, media superstar Sean Mullally with us. Um, before the break, Tony, I asked you a question about what, what are you looking to do going forward? Are there any great, grand new ideas or, or, or things that you're planning? If we really like Tony Malaciotis, this is what we're going to get uh, in the next couple of years. First of all, my office is governed by laws and I have to follow the laws. So I'm trying to stay with every aspect of the law in every area that my office is involved in. I like to continue to do what we're doing already. We have a big problem with budget cuts all over the county. My office has been very instrumental the last four years on balancing the budget. That's the stuff that doesn't... Now balancing, you mean the, the treasurer's office no, budget? No, the whole budget for the county. Okay. My office was very instrumental. You have to remember that most of the funds are funded through my office. Okay. Um, I know where the funds are. I know what we have available. I know where the cuts can be made and so forth. I have very capable people in my office that I'm very proud of in the work that we do. Uh, county administrator and county commissioners, different departments during budget process. Uh, I am busy with meetings with them all the time, working on how well can we cut, how can we save jobs and so forth. I like to continue that. We still have hard times ahead. And I like to continue the work that we're doing in order to keep people in jobs within Muskegon County, give the best service that we can to the uh, people that elect us and put us in trust in us to do the right job in the office because I do believe that every elected position is a public servant and the people that put us in these positions are actually our bosses and they expect us to do the best in our ability. Well, one thing that, that uh, must be 
you know, just acknowledged by somebody who, who is perhaps running against you is the fact that you've been elected many times. And, and I would, uh, so the, the public in Muskegon, uh, at, at least to the extent the, of the voters, feels that you are worthy of re-election. And part of that is because you've got a pretty interesting background history in terms of a job, at, among other things. And, and Sean, you have oh, some I questions gotta, on that. i got to say, voters typically want to know more about uh, a candidate than uh, than what you've, you've you've done in office. You've been our treasurer for quite some time, but you're you're more than that. You you own a couple of uh, very popular restaurants in in the community, and my personal favorite, the Al Al Tree Cafe, has some of the best coffee in town. I must say. <laughs> Thank you. You know, usually <laughs> restaurateurs come bringing food, and Oscar, I don't <laughs> yeah. smell any uh, food they, here this morning. I had to start early this morning with other meetings, so I didn't get a chance. If you can let me know, I will make sure we had something. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about how your experience as an entrepreneur and a small business owner for for all these years has. Uh, prepared you for, for the job and balancing books and whatnot? Sure. Of course, I, I, you know, I came in this country in 1967. I, I was born and raised in, in Greece, and um, I could not speak English when I first came. And a few years later, I graduated from Michigan High School. I attended Eastern Michigan University, and I worked at uh, the Brown Jack restaurant, the famous Brown Jack restaurant in Arbor, trying to make things meet. Mm -hmm. um, I met a man there that was a customer that had a little store that was empty right on South University where all the students were. 18 years old, I started my first business, hardly speaking the language, mm -hmm. and it was a little import shop. And uh, of course, uh, working in restaurants, I got intrigued by the restaurant business and I decided that that's what I wanted to do in my life. Mm -hmm. So when I got married, um, we moved back to Muskegon, both my wife uh, at the time and, and myself, or, you know, we came from Muskegon that we went there. So we opened our first restaurant downtown in the old medical arts building. Mm -hmm. Then I, I opened another restaurant called the Plaka Restaurant, which was a Greek-American cuisine on Broadway and Henry. And in 1981, I opened one of 17 uh, stores in three states, uh, pizzerias that I call it Greek Tony's Pizza. And eventually from there, of course, we went with the Two Tony's Taverna Grill in Spring Lake, along mm -hmm. with Tony Tag. Uh, that's why it's called Two Tony's. Mm -hmm and so on. Um, I think my business background and, and my experience and uh, I like to think that I've been semi-successful in, in that field is what intrigued me. But what really got me into politics more than anything else, in 1986 mm -hmm. there was a huge earthquake in my hometown in Greece and my mm -hmm. parents were there at the time and although it wasn't a big loss of life because they were dedicating a brand new ferry um, and all the people were down by the water when the big one hit, there was 21 deaths, 80% mm -hmm. uh, of the city was destroyed or damaged. So I took care of myself, I needed to do something. I went to Channel 8 actually with Susan Zicha in Grand Rapids. She put me on at 5.30 and so forth. Mm -hmm. And in, in, uh, in a matter of about 10 days, I left for Greece with 13,000 pounds of clothing, blankets, oh, wow. And Abjans from Kalamazoo gave me over-the-counter medication to go. Good for you. Once we were there, uh, we took films and everything else. Uh, we sent that to every Greek affiliate radio station and, and television station in, in Australia, United States, South America, you know, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And in a matter of just six months, we were able to raise millions of dollars that went straight to Greece, mm -hmm. and they rebuilt the hospitals, the schools with the money and everything else. Um, because of that, I was invited to some big political gatherings and so forth, and uh, I was intrigued that you can do so much for a community or a country or a state, you know, mm -hmm. uh, by just caring about people. And mm -hmm. I, I think, if anything, I mean, I can be called all kinds of different things, but I, I, I think nobody's going to say that I don't care for people. Mm -hmm. um, by doing that, a few years later, I was elected uh, uh, governor in the state of Michigan for the Greek organization called AHEPA. Hmm. And of course, that took me into the White House a few times during the Reagan administration, and and I, I thought that maybe this is part of my calling. Mm -hmm. So I did some research, and I decided to run for county treasurer. I'm uh, sorry, county commissioner at the time, mm -hmm. and I went to my good friend uh, Jacob uh, Fankhauser, who was there for 18 years, and he told me that. Uh, uh, he would be happy to endorse me, but he wanted me to wait two more years because he wanted to stay another term. Mm -hmm. and well, he ended up, I waited eight years, you know, uh, four, four different terms that he wanted to go and finally I says, Jake, I need to jump in this thing, otherwise I'm never <laughs> going to do it. 
never expected to really beat him because he was a great commissioner, great mm -hmm. individual, and a heck of a school teacher, actually, I'm one of Soros. Yep, I and, um, But also, I was very involved in soccer. I, I started a lot of the soccer programs here, the Montessori program, the Rich Buffer program. I built fields. I did a lot of things with the youth and everything else. And I think that was part of the reason that I beat such a great man on mm -hmm. that race, and I became county commissioner. Then I lost my reelection two years later, and at the time I decided that what I want to do is what I'm doing in my business, but to a bigger extent. But can I do it? Can mm -hmm. I do the good job that uh, I'll be proud of and the people that gave me that chance will be proud of? So I took the time to visit different treasures around the state and sit down with them for a day apiece mm -hmm. and try to find out. And <clears throat> I came to a conclusion that it's not different what I'm doing in my business, except it's in a much bigger um, a scenario and and if something goes wrong, if it's my business, it's my fault, but I can do anything wrong, you know, when I'm dealing with taxpayers' money. And like I said prior at uh, in the beginning of this interview, I'm very proud of what my office has accomplished. And I'm not the kind of person that likes to take all the credit for the good things. I take all the blame for all the bad things that might happen. Mm -hmm. But I give a lot of credit to the staff that I have working there. I mean, they're great people. Um, when you come to pay your tax bill, you're not going to be happy paying your hard-earned money, you know, for taxes. Nobody wants to pay them. If we succeed to see that there's a smile on that face and the person lives happy with that receipt afterwards, we have succeeded when we have done. Mm -hmm. And and we see that every single day in my office. Well, let me let me jump on that because I, I'll give you a little uh, kudos here because you've got a truly exceptional, I think, uh, uh, website on the Muskegon County uh, official website that they have, uh, and you can just go to, to well, frankly, the easiest ways to Google Muskegon County Treasurer, but you've got frequently asked questions and all sorts of things about land bank and things of, of that sort, which I, I, I really do think is, is critically important in terms of communicating, and I, I, I would hope that more people would take advantage of. But let me ask you this, because this has been a, a big issue for me, as you know, uh, and of course you're a treasurer, but for me, budgets do matter. You run a department. How has your budget, total budget, in other words, how much are you spending? How has that changed, let's say, over the last six years or so, and how has it changed going forward? Is it going? Is your budget going up? Are you spending more money to do these things? Are you spending less? How, how is it, you know, year after year, the budget for, for the treasurer's office? Well, it's not any different than any other department. We have been going down tremendously. Part of what I said earlier, as far as we have helped balance the budget, my office, into the county, it's part of making cuts without... Um, uh, uh, losing uh, jobs. Uh, that's very important to me. I don't want to see any job losses in, within Muskegon County government. Of course, that's not 100% safe, you know, and, and sometimes things can happen. Um, the, only, the only jobs that were lost in my office, and it has helped to lower my budget there, it's been our retirements. I have not lost anybody, so I have kept those positions open in order to help the budget. But you're still able, okay, this goes on to the future then. You've lost people to retirement, so you haven't been laying people off, which I think is a noble cause, maybe not for the taxpayers, but certainly for the people who are working. But you're able to do the job without replacing them. Is Are we going to be looking at, after you're reelected, you're going to be hiring people and all of a sudden your budget's going to be going up? Uh, given that these positions are right. open at this point. I, I don't anticipate that to happen. I do, I'm at, I am taking an extra um, work within the office, which is the dog license, and there's been a big controversy for many years as yes. of October 1st. Um, I'm going to have to have one more position in, within the office that will be able to work on all those things. So possibly in the near future, I'll add one more position. So right. you've, uh, how do you feel your support is in the community right now for re-election? Have you got a fair amount of endorsements? I believe so. I mean, I'm a Democrat, but uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, I won with 71% of the vote. I believe it was the last election, and, and I think I'm getting a lot of support from both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe in the Democratic ideas, but uh, at the same token, I support uh, any uh, Republican thing that comes through that's good for my community and the people that live in it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the biggest uh, the biggest thing for me is: Are there serious problems in whatever the office may be? Are there issues? Uh, certainly, I ran for public office. I believe that there are some some serious problems that are deserving of being addressed at the county level. But um, I, I, I looked, I dug into. I would like to find um, 
there's always some warts in the treasurer's office. I've not been <laughs> able to find them. Uh, you seem to have been doing a pretty good job at this point. Um, and we're going to talk with Eric Rodoff uh, coming up and find out what, what he may have dug out. But uh, appreciate you being here. Um, eight years says an, an awful lot. You've got experience top to bottom. Um, I wish you well in the election. I yeah, appreciate uh, that. And keep, keep balancing those books for us. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you sometime uh, after the election, uh, one way or the other. Well, I appreciate the chance to come here and be with you this morning. And um, wish you good luck with your show also. And uh, good luck to all candidates, Republicans or Democrats. Uh, as long as we elect good people, I think we'll, we'll, we'll do well. So. That's critically important. This is uh, current and, and uh, certainly, hopefully, um, future uh, Muskegon County Treasurer, Tony Malaziotis. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck to you, Tony. Thank you, son. Call Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. Classic Computer Sales and Service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Sweet B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Make a run for the border. Taco Bell is waiting to cook for you. Delicious tacos, nachos, chalupas, gorditas, quesadillas, or try their famous grilled stuffed burrito for only $1.99. Make it a combo for only $3.49. Their large variety includes specialties, combos, supreme salads, and kids' meals. Taco Bell, the best fast food north of the border. So walk in or drive up. Visit all of the Taco Bells in West Michigan. Open Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Taco Bells open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. And we are back at Ion Muskegon, and we, we have replaced uh, County Treasurer uh, with a County Clerk uh, wannabe, I guess. I did. That's maybe not the right Candidate. way to put it. Candidate. Candidate. <laughs> well, and, 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 and she most certainly would like to be uh, Muskegon County's next County Clerk. And, uh, I want Cindy to be the Fairfield. president. Is that how I ever know? Well, uh, <laughs> That's the next step, right? There we go. But we do have Cindy Fairfield. Uh, Cindy's got a, uh, well, most people in Muskegon County know about uh, Cindy Fairfield if they don't know her uh, personally. And Cindy, you are um, running hard to be Muskegon County's next county clerk. Um, before we get into your campaign and why it makes sense for uh, voters to elect you, I'd like to mention that we did contact um, county, the current county clerk, Nancy Waters, and while she said that she'd like to be on the show, she said, look, I'm, I'm very busy because we have a very, very uh, complex uh, ballot coming up in November. And I don't really want to be on the show talking about me, Nancy Waters. I want to talk about this, this ballot, which I think is a, a worthy thing, but our show today is to talk about candidates. So Nancy uh, uh, sends her best regards, and um, uh, perhaps we will get her on at some point um, before the uh, uh, before the election to talk about the ballot, but I would like to mention the ballot to this extent: if you are uh, if you have not already voted, um, please either go on the county website, go on the secretary of state's website, or I think preferably uh, contact your county clerk and strongly consider voting absentee. This year's ballot, with all of these uh, constitutional amendments, there are going to be six of those, uh, very complex, all sorts of. Uh, different um, uh, candidates running for everything and, and my understanding is that we're going to have two pages the ballot's going to be two pages front and back and what will happen I'm sure is and I saw we saw this when we had that that miserable 13 percent turnout in August where people didn't understand the ballot and even though the lines weren't very long people had to go back and forth there were miscountings uh, it's going to be a, a real nightmare when it comes to the Board of Canvassers and getting these things right you don't want to go to the uh, the voting uh, uh, location and find that there's a big long line. My recommendation is not to vote early because stuff happens just before the election that you, you really ought to be aware of. 
but get the ballot. Strongly consider either doing your homework, uh, but more importantly, I think if you can get an absentee ballot, um, I, I believe you. You really all have to say is that I'm not going to be around uh, locally to vote. You, it's not. It's There's not a big reasons. issue. There's I mean, several reasons that you can use. If you're over, I believe it is the age of 60. I think it's 60. 60 or 62. One of the two. If you're if you're over that threshold, you can get it without any other reason whatsoever. Well, and and if you're under that threshold, mm -hmm. you can just say I'm not going to be in town. Uh, uh, and get one, but again, this will reduce the the backup in there. Uh, so anyway, uh, and I think it's a big issue because it's a huge issue for uh, the county clerk. That's one of the most important jobs of the county clerk. And Cindy, I'll just start right out with this. Um, you've got a tremendous experience, um, and maybe we'll touch on this. We will touch on this in a sec. But why should we get rid of uh, a, a county clerk who's obviously popular? She's a very nice lady. And she appears, to, at least uh, at first glance, to have done a fine job for many years as county clerk. Why do we need a new clerk? Well, Jim, um, the county clerk's position, as you know, is not a very sexy position. I, <laughs> as I've been across the county talking to people, most people do not know the services that the clerk provides. You know, they get to know their lawmakers, uh, they get to know policy type things, but they don't realize that the clerk's office touches almost every single person in, in this county at some point or another. And it's important work. Again, it's not sexy work, but there were some issues that I learned as I was editor, and some of that was from readers calling me. Some of it was in the course of our. Now you mean when you were editor of the Muskegon Chronicle? Editor, yes, editor of the Muskegon Chronicle. Let me let me uh, make that clear. I have not been at the Chronicle since November. I left uh, uh, prior to the recent changes that were made. Okay. But some of the issues that, that came up were some issues that had to do with transparency and they had to do with customer service. The, probably the first issue that we ran into was the office was closed on numerous occasions, uh, sometimes weeks at a time. You mean during, during the week? During business hours from 8 until noon because the office was so behind in internal filing. We had customers who would sometimes take off a half a day of vacation or whatever so that they could go uh, uh, get their work done there and they would go to the office only to find that they couldn't do it. No, no, okay, let me ask you, because that's a big deal. Um, is that happened in, in the last uh, six months, year? Or? It has not. It was in the early part of the administration. I think what happened was a lot of her, once she got elected and got in By there, her you mean the, the current county yes, clerk, the current Nancy Waters? Yes, the county clerk. Once she was elected, a lot of her... Um, workers elected to either transfer jobs or to retire early. Um, I'm not sure what, what was going on there, but there were some issues and they were behind on their circuit court filing and so in order to catch that up, they elected to close the office to the public and I just thought that was wrong. Me personally, had I been clerk, I would have gone out there and sat at the counter and serviced people if that's what we needed to do. So that was one of the issues. Okay. But that's an issue that, that at this point that, has to my been knowledge, addressed. I think that 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 issue has been addressed. Okay. I right. hope that the office isn't closed like it, it was at that point, but that was kind of the first red flag. The second one was we worked with her office for about six to nine months to try to get these marriage and divorce public records that you know, the county clerk's office for decades had always worked with the Chronicle in terms of getting that information to us, and we would print it in the Chronicle once a month. Uh, we had no problem yeah, I remember looking at that. getting that information from other county clerks, Ottawa County, um, uh, Nuego, Oceana, the other areas that we covered were, were uh, eager actually to get that information out there. And for some reason, Nancy didn't want to work with us on that, and she elected not to give that information to us. And so I filed a Freedom of Information Act, which is a, a process that you can do to try to get public records. And I, got I have it. done that with the county. So, so I, I, I think you have done that. And I learned that the county clerk may give that information to us, but she does not have to. And for some reason, she elected not to. And I thought that was a little strange. Because if you had a media organization that was willing to put that information out there to readers, which at that time we were reaching one and two people in our county, why wouldn't you want to get that information? Now, is that is that the current policy uh, of the county clerk's office? That is. She so still does marriage not. and uh, divorce and listings. divorce records are no longer me being made public. 
but that's within the law. She's allowed. Or She's allowed to. Is. Now, if we knew specifically who got married that month, I, as an individual citizen, could go down there and request that. But what I was wanting to do was to get the monthly who did it, and I think it's valuable information not only for readers, but certainly for businesses and, and things to see what what marital transactions have that's taken place. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. So that's that's current policy, and you would change that policy. I would change that policy, and and I think one of the biggest issues, and this was what Manda Matera also was running uh, on when she challenged um, Nancy in the primary. And, and Manda, yeah, Manda was, uh, was a Democrat challenger who, and who uh, did lose in that primary. Okay. Was all of a sudden, we had these two monitors in the circuit court office that enabled uh, people to come in and look up records, whether it be at computer, computer terminals. Computer terminals. Computer terminals. Okay. You could look them up for free at your own time rather than going to the counter and waiting for sometimes uh, long hours. Let's say you're an attorney and you need to look up a lot of information. You may have 16 names, so you have a backlog. Ended up with people, um, anyway, she took these, these computers out. And so what happened is people had to go up to the counter to get the information that they needed. And now, who would typically use use these these computer? You know, products? attorneys use them a lot because again, it's looking up circuit court records. But let's just say I, as a mother, my daughter is dating this man, whom. I don't trust. I don't know anything about his background. Let's say I want to find out something about him and see if he's got a record. I could have gone up to that circuit court office, logged onto the computer, looked up his background, got my information, and got out of there. And those computers were removed, and so now people have to go up to the the uh, desk to get their work done. This causes people uh, who have business, whose time is valuable, it causes a backlog in their time, as well as it. it even though Nancy claims it doesn't, certainly it would cause a backlog in staff time because now you're having to hand wait on people instead of having a self-serve opportunity. Was there a reason given why, I mean, because computers are not that expensive these days. I mean, was there, and, and certainly as the county seems to be expanding into new buildings all the time, uh, it, it seems like the space would be available. What was the reason for pulling this apart? Because I, I have, it has become an issue when I go to the county commission meetings. I know attorneys have complained about this. I don't want to misrepresent. Do you know th about this issue, Sean? Um, about the t computer terminals? Right. Um, not as much as what Well, I know a little bit because I've heard Nancy explain what was going on. Staff were complaining a lot because mm -hmm. people would get on computers and a lot of times they don't know how to do things. Let's face it. Mm -hmm. How many times have I gotten on there and I have to go through the tutorial to learn how to do these things? Right. So you would get people who were complaining a lot and they were having to go, or not complaining, they would get lost in how to do the process so they would have to go up to the staff to ask questions. And so staff there complain that, hey, let's just take them out. This is wasting too much of oh, our time. It seems, it seems to me that uh, one of the biggest advantages of having information electronic is being able to access it remotely. Right. I mean, if you're putting those computers in the lobby, you're, you're really only adding a fraction of the usefulness as if you were to put it online. Right. And I, I think that would be... Well, you know, really, Sean, that's a very interesting point. Is that is that something that you had considered, making this, this information available online? Well, that's what I would like to do. I think that's a big part of my platform. I think that um, what hap what's happened, and certainly happened in my industry, the newspaper industry, probably more than anything, is we had to latch on to new technology in order to deliver information to people in various ways. Certainly older folks still tend to like to do their, their service face to face and we recognize that. But myself, I do almost all my bill paying online now. You told me that I would have done that four years ago, I would have probably thought you were crazy. But that's how fast technology is changing and I think we need to have processes that are available for different people at their convenience, whether it's remotely, and you can do that cheaply. There are, you have an overhead, uh, an, an initial overhead software cost, but you do it cheaply, it saves staff time, so now you don't have to ever close your office down to catch up on filing. You have your staff available to do that, and you make it more convenient for your customers to do their business. All right, we're gonna have to uh, take a break here. Uh, we will be back, and, I, and I, what I'd like to focus on again is because while you are a known commodity, people know who you are, you've got a, a good history. Let's talk a tad about your history and then let's go back and focus on uh, what would change under County Clerk Cindy Fairfield. So we'll be back at I Am Muskegon. Call 
Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. Make a run for the border. Taco Bell is waiting to cook for you. Delicious tacos, nachos, chalupas, gorditas, quesadillas, or try their famous grilled stuffed burrito for only $1.99. Make it a combo for only $3.49. Their large variety includes specialties, combos, supreme salads, and kids' meals. Taco Bell, the best fast food north of the border. So walk in or drive up. Visit all of the Taco Bells in West Michigan. Open Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Taco Bells open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. Classic Computer Sales and Service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Sweet B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Your table in, they take your painting out. You bring your linens in and shake the creases out. You do the hokey pokey in downtown Whitehall. That's what it's all about. That's how we do it at Kobe's Hokey Pokey. It's hip, electric, and sassy with 4,500 square feet of -of one-of-a-kind items like vintage furniture and jewelry, contemporary art, cottage accessories, and clever reinvented pieces. You also find new ladies discounted designer clothing, most under $20. Items move quickly, so don't be pokey. Hurry to the Hokey Pokey, open seven days a week in downtown Whitehall. Come find the unexpected at Colby's Hokey Pokey. You put your table in, they take your painting out. You bring your linens in and shake the creases out. You do the hokey pokey in downtown Whitehall. That's what it's all about. And we are back at I Am Muskegon and we're talking with Cindy Fairfield, who is a Republican candidate for Muskegon County Clerk. And Cindy, uh, I jumped over this, but I, I want to get back to, um, you've got a pretty extensive history in Muskegon County. Tell us a little bit about Cindy. Uh, certainly, we know about your newspaper a little bit, but I know there's a lot more to the story. Well, you know, a lot of people will ask me, because I've had columns in the paper, and a lot of people really didn't know. I, I've been accused by conservatives of being a left-wing liberal, and I've been accused by uh, liberals of being a conservative so a lot of people really didn't know what my political affiliation was and I think that's important when you're running a newspaper you really need to be broad-minded on that I am running Republican Jim I'm not quite nearly as conservative as you but I grew up in a family my dad was a a union man he worked at at GE and and you know we had hard times Um, where did you grow up I grew up in southern Ohio near Cincinnati and um, that is something we really ought to hold against you Come on. <laughs> but she ended up here. Okay. But I ended up there here. My go. husband is from Muskegon. I've been All here right. for, for nearly 27 years. But we grew up, you know, I, we had hard times. But, you know, my parents never owned a credit card. You know, when we had hard times, it was like you buckle down and you get through it. I mean, I can remember being out of oil for a week at a time in the winter where we had to wear coats in the house. And But we found a way to get by. And so, you know, I'm concerned about the debt, obviously, but I'm concerned about government spending more than it's taking in. And even um, in the in the clerk's office, I hear this a lot, you know, we need more funding, we need more funding. Well, you know, as part of my job at the Chronicle, we did this Working Poor series, and what we found out is, is uh, contrary to what a lot of people might think, everybody thinks somebody's out there fleecing the system and trying to get, get free money from the government, and there are those. Certainly you get those abuses in almost every walk of life. But we have a lot of working people who are working very, very hard, and they're working, they're, they're underpaid, they're working two jobs. They can't afford to pay more taxes for the services they need. So, you know, I have some experience at the Chronicle working with fewer resources and uh, uh, a retracting budget, and I'd like to bring that experience into our county clerk's office and see how can we keep the services that you need, keep them convenient for you without asking for more funding, without raising fees on things. 
I think that's very important in our county. Well, tell us a, a little bit more, more about that. You were at the Chronicle for, for many years, and that's how almost everybody in this community knows you, ultimately as editor. Mm -hmm. And during during that time, the, the Chronicle went through a lot of challenges, a lot of changes, as did the whole newspaper industry nationwide, obviously. What does that experience of having to make some, some very dramatic changes and in a lot of cases cutbacks in an organization, what, what kind of lessons do you take from that that you might apply to working in our county government? See, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's been a very valuable experience to me. Nobody wants to go through that, and I know certainly county government is, is going through that now as, as the, the tax rolls have, have decreased. Nobody wants to make cuts, but, but you know, I, I view myself as I'm kind of a problem solver. I'm kind of a person who likes to look for solutions. How can we look at different ways of doing things? Certainly, um, you know, when I took over, we had a staff of approximately 53. That staff, over a three-year period, uh, uh, retracted down to about 27 people. So I lost almost 50% of my staff, and the challenge was we wanted to keep our newspaper going on a seven-day-a-week seven day week cycle, and even as other newspapers were, you know, as early as 2009, the Detroit Free Press and News went down to three days a week, and, and some other papers on the east side did too. I wanted to make sure that we didn't do that. And so I had to look at different things that we did. How did we get the news? You know, we used more community news, but really what we did is we did a lot more cross-training, and I'd like to see that more in government. I think there's a lot of silos in here, like, you know, I know Tony Malazzi Otis was in here earlier. I think there's ways that we can, we can look into other areas of our government, whether it's Register of Deeds, County Treasurer. What areas can we share? How can we, you know, cross over into these other areas, do more collaboration, more teamwork to bring a better product to our customers and also save the county money? And I think my experience in looking at a budget, looking at ways to, to find solutions, I think that's something that would be useful that I could bring into that office. Let me, I asked uh, Tony this question, Tony Malazziotis. Uh, one of the areas that, that I, I think deserves more looking into is the budget of each of the, uh, the elected officials. Uh, you name it, it seems to me that we ought to, we ought to be shown from one year to the next what the specific budget is. It's a little hard to figure that out. Um, do you believe, uh, I, I know it's awful tough without be, having hands on, but have you done enough digging to find out, has the budget, uh, has the county clerk's budget gone up? Are they spending more money to do the job or do we, do we know that yet? No, I know that Nancy had to cut $100,000 from her budget. Um, in her first year there, and that's tough. Okay, I get it, you know, because I had to cut a million out of mine over three years. Sure. So I understand, and it's difficult when you're looking at different things. The budget process, and, and Bonnie Hammersley assured me that it was going to be a little bit more readable, a little bit more transparent. I don't know if you've had your opportunities to get on that budget, but it, basically you have to be an accountant to read it. So I haven't had an opportunity to delve in there to see, you know, what are we doing? You know, I know at our office at the Chronicle, we used to go through vendors quite a bit for some of our office supplies. When you do that, when you find vendors, typically they're pretty expensive. You know, we found it was actually cheaper to have our, our administrative assistant go to Staples buy our, our office supplies. I mean, there's some... Uh, no, I've seen that a lot. Yeah, we, we, there's some ways to do things. Certainly you want to give people... These are common sense ideas that you're... Well, bringing. they are. And so we had to go step by step. You know, I ended up, my, my assistant, um, I ended up really not having a secretary. I pretty much answered my own phones. I mean, there's different things to... different ways to look at things um, that you're doing. Anything I, uh, I, I, I want to still talk about maybe what the county uh, clerk does, but specifically what you're talking about is looking into it about how we can make it uh, less expensive, saving money. Anything in particular that you'd like to add, you did mention a few things in the, in the terminals and all this, but anything else that, okay, Cindy Fairfield is now our new county clerk. What, what would we see new under the, this administration? Well, I want to continue the online process. I think Ottawa County is kind of a leader in the whole state, to be honest with you, in terms of what they have online. And I realize that they probably have more resources in their office because they have more population in their county. But they're really a leader on that, and, and they've pretty much got all of their circuit court files are online. Um, I would like to see that happen, all of those be online. I would like to explore, you know, doing juror uh, questionnaires online, um, um, 
there may be an area that we can explore in that that regard. Uh, marriage licenses, I'm not sure. I think Nancy started working on that a few months ago, trying to get marriage licenses online. Anything that we legally can do online, we ought to do online because it does save money. I know that one thing uh, Nancy did that I'm, I'm a very big advocate of is she did bring campaign finance online. I just didn't I think that's wonderful. That's a wonderful very thing. Handy. But here's an area that I think we just need more experience in looking at things. Ottawa County gets theirs done for free with an existing vendor. My understanding is we're paying about $3,000 a month to have that service, or at least we were at one time, paying about $3,000 a month to have that service done. So, so we just need to be kind of creative and looking at options where we can find opportunities to save money and still provide services. You know, I, I, I will say what Austin Well, the only thing I was going to say about having things online, is it going to be, do you have a certain uh, place in mind that you're going to use that would put this online? Because there are some places online that are very difficult to go through, and there are, are some other ones that are very smooth and, and explain everything pretty well. Very Oscar, I think mm -hmm. that's a really great point because I had to use a lot of technology at the Chronicle. I'm old school, you know. I, I'm back in the days where we had the typesetters and, and you know, the, the tape coming out of the AP yeah. wire. I mean, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. So, so I'm not someone who can get in there and I don't want to troubleshoot. I want things simple. Right. For one thing, I want I would like to redo the, the cover page of the county website and immediately for people who go there, the first thing you see when you go to the county clerk's website online services so you have a list of these are the things that you can access online so people know right away I would like an area that says frequently asked questions because my gosh every, almost everybody's website I go to whether I'm paying a bill or whatever I'm always in those FAQs so, you know because I get messed up actually uh, in looking at Tony Malasiotis's uh, treasurer's website they've got uh, the, the whole section there I, I would say the clerks current clerk's website is, is very good, but you're bringing up some ideas that are not on that site. And I think, you know, one thing I like about um, elections is that it does put the pressure on and who's, who's ever running to get innovative and come up with, with different ideas to be more efficient. You just went through this in business. That's what competition is all about. Um, it always seemed to me, we, we have Muskegon County and, and sadly to too many people, and, and, and sadly it's too true in too many occasions, we are the mistake on the lake. And when we have right next door to us, we have Ottawa County, who is not a mistake, whose, whose jobs are growing, whose taxes are lower, whose debt is lower. The, the differences are so clear, it's, it's frightening. And it always seemed to me that too often in Muskegon County, our elected officials and our uh, county employees want to reinvent the wheel when we've got just a few miles down the road, someone who's really spent a lot of time looking at the wheel and, and it's running like a, like a Firestone tire, you know, or a Goodyear tire. And um, I, I like the idea from what you're telling me here is that you're looking, you're in communication with folks in, in other counties where it does work. Because uh, I'm not going to knock our current county clerk's uh, office because, frankly, I think it does work pretty well. There's no question it, it can, like all the other offices, can work better. And I like, I like the fact that you're looking to those places where it can look, where we can make it uh, more efficient and less expensive because, as Tony Malasiota said, and, and anybody who knows anything about uh, what's going on in our world economy, it isn't getting better here. It most certainly isn't getting better in Michigan. It most certainly isn't getting better in Muskegon County. We just had, um, not that long ago, we had uh, unemployment numbers come out. Uh, again, Ottawa County's numbers going up, Muskegon County's employment numbers going down. That's, that means that translates into less, uh, less uh, money to operate the services that are critical in, in the county. There's one issue I'm kind of curious about right now. There's a little mini controversy brewing between the Secretary of State and a lot of the, the county clerks throughout the state. Mm -hmm. And that is, there, there was a bill the governor actually vetoed to mandate putting a citizenship checkbox on all the ballot request forms. Mm -hmm. Now, the Secretary of State can't mandate that, but is requesting it of all the county clerks, and some of them are refusing because, of course, people already asked that originally when they registered to vote, so it's kind of a redundant question on what is already becoming a very complicated ballot. And I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. Well, can I just jump in here before you answer this? Um, I do not believe that you need to answer the question that you are a citizen when you motor voter register to vote. Now, I could be wrong on that, but I know certainly in some states, uh, California being one, 
is that you do not need to be a citizen to get a driver's license, right. but the driver's license is the only documentation that you need in order to, to register to vote. Well, and, and I'm not so sure that, that people have previously said, stated uh, under oath or at least under penalty of, of, of uh, violating a law mm -hmm. that, they have, uh, that they are American citizens. So I, I, I will, until we know the answer, I'll, I'll say, okay, you say this, but, but I, I'm not so sure that people have already said that they are American citizens, signed, sealed, and delivered. So anyway, just jumping in on that. Well, you know, I, I guess I don't have real strong thoughts on it, but what I will say is um, I don't think it's an unreasonable request to ask somebody to, to produce some kind of state ID. And I've, I've heard the other side that this disenfranchises uh, voters who are, are, are economically poor, elderly, etc. But, you know, I've been a member of my credit union for 26 years, and every time I go into my bank, even though they know me there, I've been there a thousand times, far more than that, I always have to show my license in order to, to get my business done. And, you know, it seems like voting is such an important thing because you're, you're really setting the tone and you're picking a person who's going to be representing you, who's going to be getting paid by taxpayer dollars. It doesn't seem like it's a very unreasonable request to have that. I guess I would need to see proof or more information of why poor or elderly people would, would not be able to have an ID with them when they went to vote. Yeah, I, I, that's a, I, I like where you're coming from, obviously, uh, Sean, Sean and I may differ on this, but I do think it's kind of important for people to understand that for those who say the political parties are identical, uh, and certainly they are in, in many awful ways, but <laughs> this is a clear difference. Democrats almost universally are against the requirement to provide photo ID, pure proof to vote, and Republicans almost universally say, wait a minute, the vote is critically important. When someone cheats, you disenfranchise someone else. So there is a clear difference there. Um, Cindy, thank you for being with us. We've got to uh, we've got to move on. Um, best of luck. Uh, you bring some very interesting ideas. Uh, the the new uh, county clerk, if it's going to be Fairfield, is going to bring very interesting things. I think, and uh, sounds like uh, some economies to scale if you're elected. So uh, best of luck in the coming election. Thanks, Jim and Sean, for having me. Really appreciate it. And you too, Oscar. Well, thank you for coming. Bye bye. Call Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. Classic Computer Sales and Service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Suite B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Make a run for the border. Taco Bell is waiting to cook for you. Delicious tacos, nachos, chalupas, gorditas, quesadillas, or try their famous grilled stuffed burrito for only $1.99. Make it a combo for only $3.49. Their large variety includes specialties, combos, supreme salads, and kids' meals. Taco Bell, the best fast food north of the border. So walk in or drive up. Visit all of the Taco Bells in West Michigan. Open Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Taco Bells open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. And we are back at I Am Muskegon. We've got Jim Riley, your host, Oscar Osbo, the, the, the main man Oscar, the legendary Oscar. And we've got um, Sean Mullally helping us out as co-host today. And uh, we have a candidate, the Republican candidate for the Muskegon County Treasurer's Office, Eric Rodoff. Good morning, Eric. Thank thanks, you for, thanks for stopping in. Um, Eric, you have got, a, as far as I'm concerned, one of the most interesting backgrounds, although certainly Tony Malatziotis' uh, background is really quite interesting in and of itself. But Eric, uh, give us a little background. Who are you? How'd you get here? Well, uh, I actually graduated from Michigan State University with two degrees. All oh right, golly, we got three of us right here. Two, two degrees. degrees. One in international relations and the other in computer science. Okay. 
and right after college I went over to the former Soviet Union to work on help uh, establishing the free market where I built a telephone directory service like our Yellow Pages. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Now where? Y where in the Soviet Union? A city called Uskaminogorsk, Kazakhstan. Uh, easy for you well, to spell it. Spell it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Kazakhstan, which is now a standalone republic, yes. is that correct? Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna, we could spend a whole hour talking about that. But then uh, a mm -hmm. after that, I came back. Um, where I then started a nonprofit called Michigan Watchdogs, all right. uh, which is to investigate the waste, fraud, and abuse in all local government throughout the state of Michigan. Which I would imagine is a, a job that's never ending. Very much so. <laughs> all righty. Well, that's okay. So, uh, and any, uh, anything else you want to tell us about Eric Rodoff? Because uh, I did mention early in the show that you are the, the current chairman of the Muskegon Tea Party. That so, you are running as a Republican. And you most certainly are a fiscal conservative. That is very true. Yes. Okay. All right. And you think that uh, that you would be a better uh, treasurer for Muskegon County than the current uh, occupant? Very much so. Okay. Tell us why. Well, first of all, I care what goes on with the cities and townships. Uh, currently, we have not sold our prop the properties that they have for sale, and they've charged back over one point four million dollars to the cities and townships because we can't sell the property. No, wait a minute. I, I don't tell me more about this because. When you say we, who is the we? Oh, the, the county. Okay, the, the county has... The county has a public land bank, which they um, have to do every year okay. to try to recover the lost taxes. In other words, they they uh, sell houses that have defaulted on their taxes, Yes. and then they take the money in, uh, and they sell the houses to somebody else. Okay, right. that seems pretty reasonable. What, right. what, what's wrong with that? Well, because we're one of the few counties that actually have had to charge the cities and townships back because we don't make enough money. We either bundle the properties together uh, so they can't be sold, or we take them and put them into the county land bank. Now, when you say we, who's the we? The county. Oh, okay. So, so we got to be we got to make sure we're clear as to who we're talking about because <laughs> it isn't you or me. No, no. It is. It's essentially it's Tony Malaziotis who runs the the county treasurer department. Correct. Okay. Let's let's take one step at a time. Let's just say that the county uh, has a, a house that has defaulted on its taxes. It's gone through the three years and one month, and they sell it at auction. Correct. Okay. Uh, that the the house is in uh, Muskegon Township. Um, the taxes that are due are let's just say five thousand dollars, and they only sell the house for two thousand. Okay. You're telling me that the county then. Back charges the township for yes. the difference. Yes. Now, is that a policy that is standard throughout the state of Michigan, or is that unique to Michigan to Muskegon? It is standard, but the thing is, the other counties sell their properties overall much higher than the taxes owed. Who would buy that? Okay. Well, let's say you're you're selling at this house that's got five thousand dollars in back taxes. Uh, how how do we get the word out that um, that the house is for sale? What are they doing better? Uh, than, than us. Uh, uh, other counties, what are they doing uh, better than Muskegon County? Or is it just a difference in demand? Or is it a difference in demand? Yeah. Um, because we know the problems here in the county. A few of the problems that we have is the one, in particular in 2008, they bundled 48 properties together, required that the purchaser have a $10 million performance bond and demolish every building on all 48 properties within 30 days. Now wait, when was this? 2010. The 2010 Are these contiguous properties? No. They're spread all over. Spread all over. Now, and that, that doesn't seem like it's a very good idea from somebody trying to sell the properties. Oh, it was very good for the land bank. Okay, it, okay, let's come back to that, all right? Because uh, I don't quite get what you mean by that. But, mm -hmm. but I would, it, it seems to me, like you say, that really limited the number of buyers. In other words, if Fred and Sally Smith living over in Kent County said, hey, I'd like to... I'd like to move to Muskegon and buy this house. They couldn't buy the house. They would have had to purchase these 48 properties? Yes. Uh, okay. I now, who's going to buy a set of 48 non contiguous properties with the requirement they have to demolish them yeah, all and that, then have vacant lots spread well, all over? And that's the, the thing. No one did. Okay. Well, now let's, let's get back to that. But, but there's got to be another side to this story. Uh, well, what does the county say why they did this? Uh, the county didn't. I saw nothing where they said what they, why they did it. Okay, all right. Um, but what happened is after no one bought it, the county then charged the cities and townships for the, the taxes that were not due, and then the properties went to the county land bank. Now the county land bank 
then turned around and sold the properties individually. And, and, uh, for for three hundred and fifty four thousand dollars. Now, <laughs> this is a complex uh, this, you know conversation we're having here, and I don't want to get too bogged into it, but. Mm -hmm. It would seem to me that if I was a township or a city that seems like they got screwed, I would be complaining. Are, are they in fact doing this? I know that there was a lawsuit, but the county won that lawsuit uh, this past spring. Uh, there was, a, I believe it was Muskegon Township, w had sued the county over something similar. Is yep. that correct? Okay. And the county won, so it seems to me that the county was doing, whatever they were doing was legal, is that correct? Oh, I, I have not found that that was illegal what they did. Oh, maybe immoral, or yeah. maybe not the right thing yeah. to do. Immoral is too strong a term. Okay, all right. So how would uh, how would treasurer uh, Eric Rodoff uh, do it? In, 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 how would you do it differently? Well, first thing I do, and which we didn't point out, is they do put the properties online. By they, you mean the Muskegon the, the County? The Muskegon County does before the public auction. Okay, but there's a very limited amount of information. All right. So the first thing I do is let buyers actually know what's going on, mm -hmm. what properties are, and what the value is. Okay. Now, do something like you would do at the uh, the multiple listing service that realtors do. Um, Take I'd like to do that with the auctions, but I'm unsure if I can do that with the auctions. Okay. All right. But you'd add more information. Right. Okay. In other words, you want to bring more buyers in, which ultimately would increase the the value of you know, the cost uh, right. that ultimately that these things were sold for. Okay. All right. Um, Any reason? Okay, and, and they're not doing that at least to to your level of satisfaction. Oh, they're not. And by they, the they're, they're not pressure. doing it at all. Um, okay, all so right. you're not saying like virtual tours, though. You're just saying just more information. I, mm -hmm. Tell you the truth, least, on some of them, I might very well do that. Virtual tours would be a more a bigger seller, I would think. But. True. I mean, we we got with property. technology that's not rocket science. Right. right. Yeah. No, I mean, and, and the property values. Some of them, I mean, you got houses sold for a uh, hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars normally. But they, the one particular one went for five th or fifty thousand in cash. All right. There's a limit to how much information you can give if you don't have possession of the house. But they have possession of the house. Have, have is it already vacant at this point, or is the delinquent taxpayer still residing in, in the property and may not be amenable to somebody coming in and Ooh, taking photos? That's an interesting yeah. point. I know it is the court cases in April or May where the county takes possession of the property. Okay. I do not know if they remove. The individuals beforehand or not. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I don't want to get bogged down into how we're going to pr present these, but you're suggesting, uh, number one, that we could we could do a far better job from a salesman's standpoint by providing more information. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the concept of bundling. Uh, well, okay, the, the, was there any argument why it makes sense to bundle 48 properties and not sell them individually? Um, Did the realtors get involved in this, or was this pure bid at, a, at, a, at an auction? Um, I I have no idea why why they bundled them together. I know okay. in 2011 they bundled 50 properties. There's got to be a reason why they did that for um, when I talked with reason. when I talked with Ottawa County, they said they bundle them to make sure the properties don't sell. Right. So that they can get a hold of them. Does Ottawa County do the same kind of thing? Uh, they bundled one set of properties because it was docks that had been demolished because of the weather, but they still had deeds that they were docks. Okay, so so they they do bundle, but but they do it in a different way. Special in other words, yeah. when you spoke, it's it interesting again that we've got somebody else who's contacted Ottawa County, the county that does seem to work very well for ideas. So, okay, now there's there's two reasons why uh, an elected official would do something that that doesn't seem to make sense. Well, there's three reasons actually. One is that it does make sense, and we don't know the rest of the story. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. at this point, we don't know the answer. But one would be ineptness, they just, you know, laziness, whatever, you know, eh, it's easier to do the 48, bundle them up and, and uh, we don't need to worry about it. And the other one is that they've got some ulterior motive. Uh, you have suggested before that there might very well be an ulterior motive, not a criminal one, not, a, not enriching themselves, but what, why do you think they're doing this? Well, um, all 48 properties went to the, then to the land bank. Okay, the land bank is, is when, when a defaulted property um, uh, the, the, it doesn't sell, then the county takes possession and the county owns the land, is that correct? The county land bank is actually a joint venture between the county and the state of Michigan county land. Okay, alright. Which is supposed to collect properties to stabilize property values and stop blight. Okay, 
So do they then engage in rehabilitation? Do they're they supposed to. They're supposed to do rehabilitation. No, by the, okay, the, the they, county, county land. The they bank. is the county. All right. No, the county land bank. The land bank. Entity, okay. Which is a separate entity. Okay. Although the treasurer is in charge of, is the chairman of the land bank. It is okay. a separate okay. entity. All right. Okay, but let's just make it simple. We have one house that goes back to the land bank. Okay. The county gets this uh, this house. Mm -hmm. It goes into the land bank. All right, because. Uh, it didn't sell. Right. All right. What does the land bank do with it? They they can either fix it up or, or what else might they do with it? They can fix it or sell it. Okay. But they approve who purchases. Not anybody can purchase it. So, so it's not an auction situation at that point. No. Oh. Oh. So there's an opportunity right. then for people to to say, hey, this is to be sold to my niece's brother-in-law. Exactly. I mean that and that is that what you're alleging is happening? There was one instance where. Um, uh, Commissioner Snyder uh, closed the meeting, left, then they reopened. Closed, closed the meeting of the, the land, land bank. bank. Okay, made it made it a, a secret meeting. No, no, he ended closed and meeting. left. Oh, he ended the meeting. He ended the oh, meeting. Okay, all right. He left. Two minutes later, they reopened it, and then voted somebody to purchase piece of property. Hmm. And then when you say the they again, we got to stick the, with nouns. Sorry, the the, the, <laughs> count, the county land bank. Oh, okay. The and remaining people that were there. Of which he okay. sits on. He sits on. Okay, so I, I'm not sure why that's an issue. The fact that someone the, had left the The question then is, was this done to what conversations people? happened in the hallway is well, maybe well, the well, open well, why, why would you, two minutes after a meeting, reopen the meeting and then pass something with the chairman, not be, or not chairman. Was the a suggestion chairman. that they wanted to do something that the, the chairman didn't want done? My 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 idea is yeah. Oh, but they didn't want something that Snyder would have voted against them. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that, that's 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 very interesting. I'm, this is news to me. Um, uh, we have to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the land banks. We're going to talk about the county treasurers. Uh, we're going to talk about interesting things uh, <laughs> that are going on that uh, that you need to know. We'll be right back. <laughs> Call Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. Classic Computer Sales and Service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Sweet B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Make a run for the border. Taco Bell is waiting to cook for you. Delicious tacos, nachos, chalupas, gorditas, quesadillas, or try their famous grilled stuffed burrito for only $1.99. Make it a combo for only $3.49. Their large variety includes specialties, combos, supreme salads, and kids' meals. Taco Bell, the best fast food north of the border. So walk in or drive up. Visit all of the Taco Bells in West Michigan. Open Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Taco Bells open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. And we're back at I Am Miss Geegan. Jim Riley, your host, with uh, Eric Rodoff, uh, candidate, Republican candidate for Muskegon County Treasurer, and Sean Mullally and Oscar over there running the board. Um, we were talking a little bit about this land bank thing, and, and I, without getting too wonkish in here, but you're suggesting that, in fact, because of the inefficiencies, for whatever reason, bundling 48 properties or 50 properties and things of that sort, that there are auctions that are not getting the best return uh, for for these properties, in some cases, forcing um, the townships and cities to make up the difference, which needless to say, they can't be happy with, and it's fully legal, uh, yeah. obviously, because of this uh, court case this past uh, uh, spring. But it's it's not really the most efficient way to handle things. And then, when the land, since it didn't sell, goes back into the land bank, then a small group that's essentially accountable to nobody. Uh, is able to then sell them on their own without without even uh, public notice. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay. And you'd like to change that. You would most certainly would change that as county treasurer. Yeah. Do you have the authority? Is this is this purely the fault or the responsibility of the, the current county uh, treasurer Tony Malaciotis, or is this 
who else might be driving this? Well, the sales for the public land auction is the county treasurer. He's in charge of that. So he decides whether they're bundled or not, and, and he right. decides how they're promoted and, right. and all that. Okay. All right. Um, he is also uh, chairman of the county land bank, but okay. there are mo other members on that board that operates that. Okay, thing. but at this point, you don't have any real specifics aside from this one meeting that you referred to in the last segment. You have no real specifics uh, that the land bank is doing anything uh, nefarious. Uh, what would you do differently? Because uh, it, it, right now, the county gets the, in the event where the county does get the land, they must dispose of it at some point, right? Right. Well, what would you do differently? No, there's another thing that we didn't get on is that not only do they bundle, but they also withdraw properties before the auction to be sold in the land bank. And that's legal. I don't believe so, and I can mm. point to the law on that one. All right. Well, what can you do? You have um, an example of a piece of property that didn't get, didn't go out for public auction, and ultimately went to the land bank. I do, but not with me at the moment. Okay, but was it a house or? It was multiple houses. Oh, okay. There was uh, 29 properties in 2012 that were withdrawn from the auction, and uh, I believe almost half of them have already been sold this year. That's very interesting. Um, we might we might have to do another show on this. <laughs> Unfortunately, we we don't have a lot of time before uh, the election. Kent, uh, Kent, Kent County is doing a similar thing with their land bank, but they've tried to meet the legality mm -hmm. by having the county buy the property and then give it to the land bank rather than the land bank get personally. Oh, so it. The, the county bids that auction with everybody else. No, or? no. The the county has first right. Well, the township first has the right to purchase it for the taxes owed, okay. and the county has the right if it's done for pub public use. Mm -hmm. And the county uses that in Kent County mm -hmm. to purchase the property, and then they then sell it to the county land bank to avoid mm -hmm. breaking that particular law. All right, all right. So I, without again, without getting too lost into the minutia here, um, there are some real questions, and and I'm getting a, a touch of it, and I, I don't know, Sean, if you're, I, I don't fully embrace this totally, but it does seem to me that there's there's some questions of, of clarity and openness that, that certainly deserve to be discussed, because um, one of the things that we do know is that the county uh, is going to be facing uh, reduced revenues, mm -hmm. and uh, taking advantage of every little revenue producer in particular with these, these townships and cities that may, uh, well, they may be getting hit, and, and they've already sued, so it's legal. So it's a question of how do we manage this. Okay, um, Sean, you had a question. Uh, one, thing, one thing I wonder about that before we move on is, you know, I guess where does, uh, where does the story end with these houses, the ones that uh, end up being auctioned the traditional way versus the ones in the land bank? Do we see, after they go through the land bank process down the road, do we see people living in those happily ever after, forever? Yeah, what happens with their taxes? Yeah, what do they do? It goes into the county, and some are sold, as you say, but, but are they all sold? Um, there are a few that have not been sold yet, and they have actually, after two to three years, if the houses don't sell, they finally actually use a realtor to try to sell them. But mm -hmm. until that time, it's only off of their website. Mm -hmm. um, although both the land bank and the... Um, county doing the auctions are relatively new. It was both done uh, over the current treasurer's term, 2005, but that's, I think. But that's in compliance done. with state law, though, right? The, yeah. the state law changed? So the state law changed where they had that ability, and so okay. therefore they, right. they... Are they targeting just straight the open market for, for buyers, or are they are they really trying to you know, target people, you know, I guess in need, for lack of a better word, well, it, that they'd it, like to see have a house? Um, I'm not sure their criteria for selling, mm -hmm. although in the minutes, one time they refused to sell it to somebody that they called was a flipper that would buy it and sell it. Mm. Um, and motivation to purchase? He had, had the money, but they didn't want it. Negates the person who's, who's the highest bidder? Well, this wasn't the bidder. This was on the land bank. This was one that was already in the land bank. All right, but somebody wants to buy it, and they say, I'm going to flip it, and they're, paying the high, they're, they're offering the highest value at that point. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. So we don't like people making a profit, um, <laughs> but but we don't have anybody else willing to pay us more for it. So that's, and, that's, and, uh, and there was two incidences in another one of the the minutes mm -hmm. where they had the coordinator of the land bank go to people that had expressed interest to try to get them to purchase it through the land bank rather than at the auction. Wow. 
Mm -hmm. One of them agreed to um, purchase it through the land bank. The other one went to the auction. And, and the benefit, the benefit mm -hmm. in doing that to, to whomever is what? Why, why would somebody say, "Don't don't buy it on auction. Buy it from us at the land bank." What's the benefit to, to the land bank? It's the price whatever the land bank sets. Okay, but and in other words, they would get a lower price. Is it that possible? If, because there would be no one bidding against it. All right. So, the, so the, there's an opportunity for the, nefarious the, things. There to is, is a second mm -hmm. issue with any property sold at the land bank. The cities and township and schools mm -hmm. only get half of the taxes for five years. Mm. Mm. All right, because that money goes to the land bank to help fund it. But you would think it would seem to me that if, if what you're saying is is an accurate rendition, that that the cities and the townships would be kind of screaming bloody murder over this. And I haven't heard much other than this one lawsuit from from Muskegon Township. Is is why aren't they? You know, if this is such a bad thing, why aren't they making some noise? Because. Um, Personally, I don't think they understand a lot what's going on with it. It was all created a few years ago. Yeah. Well, now, one, thing, one thing I want to hear about before we uh, run out of time is um, you said what you're doing professionally these days is you are you're running the, uh, the nonprofit that you yep. you organized, uh, Michigan Watchdog. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit about that and um, you know, what uh, what you've accomplished, what you hope to accomplish with it. Okay. Well, what what we do is we go through and we watch the cities and townships on how they spend their money. Do you focus on Muskegon County or Cur the whole state? Cur currently, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Muskegon County, simply okay. because of a lack of funds to do more. Okay. Um, next on our list, actually, is up in Oceana County. We've had a lot of complaints up there of uh, various underhanded dealings and stuff that we need to go up and investigate, but mm -hmm. it's been hard because we've had so much going on here. Sure. Well, there's elections coming up and everything else. Well, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, when you find something worthy of note, what do you do with it? Well, we do a few things. I mean, first we uh, publish it on our webpage. Which is? Uh, miwatchdogs.us. miwatchdogs.us. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then we also um, try to get it out to the different uh, newspapers. And how, is, how have they responded to your investigative journalism? Uh, sometimes they've published it, sometimes not. Okay. I know that they don't seem to be very uh, welcoming to the Mackinac Center, who does an absolutely spectacular job. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's it's tough getting the word out. Yes. The, 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 the newspapers sometimes seem to think that um, the, the citizens are, are the bad people and government are the good people. So, all right. Well, let me, okay, I want to get back to your campaign because uh, this is a big one. Uh, you're you're very interested in the land bank, which is an important part of the treasurer's office. But it certainly isn't the only one. There's a management component. There's a, a budget component. Uh, are they doing things efficiently? Um, uh, quickly, any other reasons why somebody said whose whose gut says I'm going to vote for Tony Malatziotis, but no, I heard this this Eric wrote off. Why why should somebody vote for Eric well, as county treasurer? Because I worry about everybody's tax dollars, not just the county. I worry to make sure that the cities and the townships and the schools receive all the tax dollars deserved to them. And and I this is in good measure because of this, the land bank. Well, the land bank's uh, one of them. Any other? I mean, you you have, for example, the um, the dog licenses all tried to be brought under the county. Okay. Under the treasurer's yes. office, rather and, and, than. And, and uh, treasurer Malaziota said that he may have to hire somebody new in order to handle that. Is, are you for this or against that? I think it should be done in the cities and townships. Oh, okay. they're closer to but it. That's a different and issue. That's, okay, that's where it's been. Yeah, that's, that's where it's point. been. All right. Okay. Any other any other reasons? Um, the other, I have not been able to find enough information to say that he's doing better or worse than what I would. Okay, but but I, what I do like uh, is, and I heard the same thing from Cindy Fairfield. I like the idea of let's look at see what other people are doing that that is the best for the residents, the businesses, the citizens of the county. And let's see if we can copy those those areas that that are that seem to be doing better. And, and I like that. Appreciate it. Thank you for being with us. Um, big election coming up, folks. As uh, we mentioned earlier, it's going to be a big, thick um, ballot. Make sure that you've done your homework. Uh, it certainly makes sense to uh, to uh, uh, investigate, if not. Jump at it, uh, getting a getting an absentee ballot. Get to the polls early. Well, get to the get to the polls early, and I and I, as opposed to voting early, don't vote, don't hand in your absentee ballot until the end, because um, because things are going to happen between now and um, and the election, and uh, I, I would uh, again, this is this is such a critically important election. We know that. Um, 
uh, certainly at the top of the ticket. The presidency is going to bring an awful lot of people out in here in Michigan. We've got the Senate race. But uh, Muskegon County has serious, serious problems. I, I, we're going to talk about this at another show, but um, it, the, the comparison between Muskegon County and Ottawa County, Muskegon, or Ottawa County has $23 million of bonded debt. Their population is significantly greater than ours. They have $27 million of bonded debt. Muskegon County, this is before the jail, has $156 million worth of bonded debt. The debt per resident in Ottawa County is $87 per resident. In Muskegon County, it's more than 10 times that at $905. So, so we can, it's not rocket science. It can be done in our county. Uh, businesses will come to a well-run county, and they will run away from counties that are not uh, well-run. Certainly Wayne County, uh, where Detroit is, and uh, Genesee County, where Flint is, are, are examples. Muskegon County, to a much lesser extent. But uh, we, we need to turn this ship around. Um, I would recommend to everybody, too, to double-check your polling places before Election oh. Day if you're going <laughs> to vote at the polls. Hopefully you voted in the primary. And, and only 16% so you know, of the registered voters did, you bet. A lot yes. of people didn't, and it's been redistricted. They may have changed. Yeah, yeah, ex absolutely. And we're going we're gonna to pound on this uh, as, as we get closer to the election. Hey, uh, don't forget that we do, uh, we do post the full audio and, and video of the show uh, on Sunday afternoons. Uh, at IonMuskegon.com and of course I'm on the Talking Muskegon show on uh, every morning or every Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning with John Van Wyck and Brian Worsham. Uh, that's 1090 WKBZ, same station you're listening to here. And we've got TV, uh, TV38, Comcast TV uh, 397 where we're on Monday evening starting from 8 to 9.30. That's prime time, so hey, you know, nothing better than that. Right. Hey, thanks uh, again to Oscar, Sean, Tony Malazio, to Cindy Fairfield, Eric Rodoff, and the entire crew here at uh, KBZ and all of you great listeners and viewers out there in Muskegon land. Next Sunday, we're going to go into the Wayback Machine a little bit. We're going to take a look at parts of one of the first shows that we ever did. This is still one of the most popular in terms of people hitting it on IamMuskegon.com, where you can look at all the old shows. Oakland County Deputy Director of Human Resources, Tom Eaton, had spoken at a forum titled The Future of Unionized Government, big issue coming up. And we replay parts of that show and examine... Uh, re-examine how uh, Muskegon County compares with other counties in our wonderful state of Michigan. So, uh, big information to know before the election. Uh, coming up, Polka Melodies. Hope you all have a great week in our little piece of heaven, folks. Next week, we'll put the eye on you, Muskegon.